President, please be seated. The court is now back in session, and we would like to now hand over to the co-prosecutor to continue presenting the documents. The President, uh, counsel for Mr. Yang Seri, you may now proceed first. Counsel Angadam, thank you, Mr. President and your honors. Very good morning again. May I request that uh, co-prosecutor refrain from raising the documents relevant to the agreed facts, the facts that Mr. Yang Sri has already agreed, and it is not useful to do that now. The trial chamber issued an order asking parties to prepare documents to be examined during the trial proceedings. And according to the request by the prosecutor on the 24th of March, 2011, we also responded by pinpointing the agreed facts by Mr. Ian Sari. This can be found in document E9, stroke 21.3. I cannot talk uh, on behalf of other accused but uh, I am here on my feet to only assert our position concerning the agreed facts and that these uh, documents uh, should not be read out now in the court. Uh, nonetheless, even the co-prosecutors wishes to also reiterate the agreed facts in the courtroom. I will not take issue with it, but I know it is uh, good that it should not be read out as it already been agreed. Um, Your Honour, can be rest assured I'm, I'm not going to read them again. Uh, but the, look, the purpose of uh, having those agreed facts read out this morning, because the Chamber has advised us one of the, the main purpose of this hearing was to demonstrate to the public and illustrate uh, the, the documentary evidence. And by fracturing documents and evidence and not allowing some to be talked about and s some others, then that clear picture doesn't come out. And, and that was the re reason why it was done. But uh, rest assured, um, I won't be reading it out again. Your Honour, shall I move to the, the video? Your Honours, um, as, as my colleague has said, we've we're trying to go through um, the documents in relation to Rang Sari in a chronological order, in a way, and then when we get to a certain type of document, um, then we would stop and discuss um, all of those documents. For example, standing committee meeting minutes, which we'll discuss shortly. But in a way, we're still in 1975 with uh, the presentation, and I would like to show a video clip with your leave it's E3 slash 2384R. And it's a, it's a clip, a video of Yang Sari talking to um, a journalist in 1975 about the reasons why, why he says Phnom Penh was evacuated. So it's two minutes and three seconds. Uh, there is a small part um, that continues on from that with Steve Hedder for about 20 seconds, but it's the same video and it's all been admitted. If we can play that video clip, please, Your Honour. The President, you may proceed, and AV Booth officers are now directed to play these video clip.
As you have known, this problem was before liberation. I supposed that there were only about two million people had to be evacuated and worked, but obviously, soon after the liberation, people who lived in Phnom Penh and provinces increased up to about three millions, in which we had prepared before. And the preparation can resolve the problem within five days for evacuating people in Phnom Penh and provinces, and people agreed to leave the city. And as a result, it was done smoothly, as we have seen. The other reasons that led us to evacuate people from Phnom Penh was that we knew clearly and received clear documents that before the liberation was done in January, it started fighting until January and June. The enemy aware that they lost when Mekong was separated. The real reason for the evacuation was that it was a way to make Cambodia modern. The population had to be politerized by establishing semi-industrial peasant producer cooperatives that swept an entire urban population into a system of re-education that was controlled by peasants and by the party through the poor peasantry. Secondly, the evacuation of Phnom Penh served to thwart uh, plans and plots to sabotage. Thank you, Your Honour. Um, just to be clear, that, that was the full length of the video. There wasn't cutting done um, to uh, interpose Steve Hedder with uh, Yang Sari. That's how the video um, appears. Your Honours, um, also in 1995, um, published in Newsweek on the 8th of September, sorry, 1975, Yang Sari gave an interview to James Pringle. He was the Newsweek's Latin American bureau chief. The document is E3-550. This interview was given by Yang Sari at the Lima Conference of Non-Aligned Nations. Um, it, as well, provides some further insight into uh, the reasons for Phnom Penh being evacuated from the, from the mouth of Yang Sari. The, the article, if it can be shown on the screen, uh, English the English version, uh, 00876030-04, and the Khmer 00291035-00291038, and the French 00698732-34, if I can start halfway down the article. James Pringle, uh, or the journalist, is talking about um, a, a propaganda film that uh, Yang Sari uh, played um, at, the, uh, at the Lima conference. And the introduction to the questions are, what made the film particularly significant was that it provided the outside world with the first glimpse of Cambodia. Indeed, the presence of Lima of newly appointed Cambodian Deputy, Deputy Premier Yang Sari, who is believed to be among the top two or three leaders in the new Phnom Penh regime, strongly suggested that new Cambodia was now ready to emerge from its shroud of mystery to seek wider international contacts. And then the conversation begins James Pringle asked Yang Sari, why did your forces evacuate the population of Phnom Penh after they captured the capital on April the 17th? And Yang Sari replied, there were two reasons, the first of which was food. We thought there were two million people in Phnom Penh, 
but when we entered, we discovered three million. In the past, the US had transported from 30,000 to 40,000 tonnes of food into a month into Phnom Penh. We did not have sufficient transport to move food into the capital, therefore the people had to go where the food was. And we had to finish, furnish this food with independence and dignity and without asking for help from any country. What was the second reason? Yang Sari answered, we discovered a document detailing a secret political military plan by the US Central Intelligence Agency and the defeated Lon Nol regime to spread confusion after our victory. There were three points to the plan. First, if we're unable to solve the problem of feeding the population, they would make trouble with agents infiltrated among the people. Second, many, many of the Lon Nol soldiers who waved white flags had in reality hidden their arms. They intended to attack us after we had taken Phnom Penh. Third, they planned to corrupt our troops and weaken their spirit of struggle with loose women, alcohol and money. Next question. Is Phnom Penh still deserted of population? Yang Sari replied, no, about 100,000 people have returned and others are returning little by little. Schools, hospitals and factories have gradually resumed their activities. People can go back to Phnom Penh if they wish or they can stay in the countryside. All of our people are working day and night to rebuild the country. Cambodia is like a giant workshop. Further down the article, about five or six questions down, Yang Sari has asked the question, does your government respect the Buddhist religion of Cambodia? He replies, we respect the religious beliefs of everybody. People have the right to believe but they must respect the state law. The pagodas in Cambodia are open. Next question. What happened to officers of the defected Lon Nol regime? Today they participate in agricultural production. We, all, we will applaud them if they are sincere and they can participate in our Cambodian national life. In our administration, we are using persons of the previous regime who are sincere. Is former Prime Minister Long Bure alive or dead? Answer, dead or not dead, he is a traitor and was judged by the people and Congress. I've now finished with that um, article, Your Honours. And if we can move to um, the topic of uh, standing committee meeting minutes, which as your honours have seen are on the case file. The first standing committee meeting minute that's on the case file is dated the, the 9th of October 1975. But before I discuss that one, I'd like to refer your honours to the statement of Q Sampan at E3 slash 27. In that statement, at Khmer 00156619, and 00156750 of the English. Kusampan states, in 
In principle, the most important body was the Central Committee, but in practice it was the Standing Committee. We can compare this to Parliament and the Government in a parliamentary regime. It is the Government that conducts the day-to-day -day business of State. And on that same page uh, at the bottom, on Khmer 00156619, uh, Q Sampan talks about how frequently the Standing Committee met. Uh, this is, of course, relevant in terms of determining the role of Yang Sari um, and Nguyen Chia and, and obviously Q Sampan as well. He states, the Central Committee convened a meeting every six months from 1970 onwards. The Standing Committee met frequently, probably about every seven to ten days or more regularly in emergencies. As your honours are aware, um, on the case file, we have 19 Standing Committee meeting minutes um, and clearly not the, the copies for seven to ten days over that three and a half year period. But of those, of those minutes that have been obtained, I would ask that we look at E3 slash 27, sorry, not, not that one, um, E3 slash 182, which is the first standing committee meeting minute that um, we have on the case file. In that document, there's no record as to who is present. However, it's an important standing committee meeting minute in that it designates the roles of Yang Sari and, uh, and other accused. And if we look at um, the first page, Khmer 0019108, and English 00183393, we see that the delegation of work is listed in orders 1 to 13. And the first person delegated with work is Comrade Secretary, with general responsibility over the military and the economy. The second is Comrade Deputy Secretary, Party Affairs, Social Action, culture, propaganda and education. And the third is Comrade Van, which is foreign affairs work, both party and the state. Um, the documents um, generally show, the other standing committee meeting minutes generally show that the listing of uh, party or the standing committee members is often done in a sequential order from Pol Pot to Nguyen Chia to Yang Sari. And we would submit that is significant um, in terms of trying to understand the hierarchy in the party. What's also significant about this Standing Committee meeting minute in terms of defining the role of uh, Yang Sari is that he's been charged with foreign affairs work both party and state not just external relations with state, but external relations in relation to parties. The other significant thing about these meeting minutes is that they are incredibly significant in their designating roles of CPK members in running the country. And it really, uh, I would submit, uh, is an indicator of how important this standing committee was, um, the fact that it's able to um, designate how the party and how the country is run. The, if we look at uh, page three in the Khmer, um, we can also see from these minutes that the standing committee is in fact the most important body in the CPK during that time. And if we look at Khmer 0019-1090 and English 
sorry, I haven't got the French. It states, but each person is not enough and the committees must work to have their members absorb and join initiatives. If it is done like this, then it's a great force. If we are forgetful, they will arrange replacements. In bringing up projects, we must ask the Standing Committee's opinion so it may decide and approve. Must avoid trends. Over the page, just following, it states, asking only the Standing Committee, if it's done like this, there would be no concentrated democracy. The Standing Committee cannot run if everything comes here in entirety. entirety. Working in individual sectors, sectors without asking the Standing Committee, this is a mistake. Therefore, that is why we must solve problems by taking the party's decisions and implementing them directly and well. In order to know what we have implemented well or what not well, that is up to whether the masses accept it or not. Further down, the power of the Standing Committee can be seen by this recorded discussion. It's at Khmer 00019111-2. states, administratively, there must be mastery. The important objective is that minutes records must be clear. What is asked must be known from decisions of the centre of the Standing Committee minutes documenting minutes of meetings of the centre, what day, what month, whatever needs to be done to make it clear what must be done. If minutes are not clear, that will lead to difficulties in review. If this can be done, it will lighten the load. Now the work is still little, but in one year, in two more years, the work will keep increasing, like economic work. For example, foreign affairs work, will be the same way. When a telegram comes in, immediately when it's received, the office must hand it to the responsible section immediately so they can examine and consider it and make proposals to the standing committee. Some matters are urgent. Military matters are given to the military. Commerce matters to commerce. Party matters to the party section. Therefore, if we move close together, this will facilitate concentrating our workforce. Again, over the page at 0019112, it states, when the Standing Committee meets, each person reports. In the past, all work was concentrated with Comrade Dunn. At a later date, it must be given to each section to consider. For example, Foreign affairs work, at a later date, it all must be considered. We do not want the work concentrated at the Standing Committee. The Office of the Standing Committee makes contacts back and forth with each section. The sta Standing Committee monitors each section's implementation of the line. The Office has the task of monitoring implementation. Submit, submitted, Your Honour, that demonstrates the, the absolute or the, the highest power in the CPK um, it was possessed by the Standing Committee. Also in this, in this meeting, it was discussed at 00019121-2, in making life view meetings, must be cautious. If we use the word traitor, that is serious. He may have feared the enemy and fled to find a place. We must closely grasp matters, party matters. Sometimes it's too serious, leading to not be able to re-educate. The point for dissemination is that in party matters, he fought in, he, he, in the organisa organisation he fought. And they're there talking about um, a particular member. That quote is in the English at 00183404. So, Your Honours, I submit it's significant that at the Standing Committee meetings, or well, certainly this one in particular, 
um, the discussions of uh, enemies and traitors uh, was part of, of those meetings, and anyone that attended them would have been privy to those discussions and been aware of um, the nature of that work. Before I move on to a, a few more standing committee meeting minutes, um, I've spoken that on the case file there's 19. Um, the evidence, by looking at those documents on the case file, we can see that Yang Sari attended at least 10 of them. And taking into account uh, Q Sampan's evidence that uh, the meetings were held every seven to 10 days, it certainly appears that um, all of the mini mi meeting minutes have not been obtained. Your Honours, the 10 standing committee meeting minutes that Yang Sari is recorded to as attending are on the 2nd of November 1975, <coughs> E3227, the 22nd of February 1976, E3229, when national defence matters were discussed on the 22nd of February 1976, again the same day, E3-230, on the 8th of March 1976, E3-231, the 11th of March 1976, E3-217, the 13th of March 1976, E3-233 and 234, and the 3rd of May 1976, E3-219, 7th of May 1976, E3-220, and the 14th of May 1976, E3-221. I will briefly run through four other standing committee, standing committee meeting minutes, um, and in these minutes as a whole, the topics discussed are foreign affairs policy, um, enemies within foreign affairs, um, countries that represent a threat to uh, Cambodia, and individuals who threaten the party, and key decisions on the acceptance and distribution of foreign aid. If we look at E3-227, that's the minutes from the 2nd of November 1975, Khmer page 0019127. If we look at the first page of those minutes, we can see the attendance records, and if it can come up on the screen, um, we can see that Comrade Pol, Pol Pot is listed first, Nguyen Chia second, and uh, Yang Sari is listed third. And in these minutes, the issue of uh, relations with Thailand and Vietnam, um, the preoc preoccupation and discussion about threats uh, from both of those countries. So significant matters of um, uh, national security were discussed at that particular meeting. And if we can now move to E3 E3 slash 230. This is a standing committee meeting minute on the 22nd of February 1976. The Khmer version is uh, 0000711. And again, if we look at that, that meeting minutes, we can see, if it can be shown on the screen, we can see that Pol Pot is listed first, uh, Nguyen Chia second, and then uh, Yang Sari is listed third. Just underneath that, it, uh, the meeting records that Comrade Vaughan, Comrade Tuk, and Comrade Van brought up a number of matters relating to industry, commerce, and transport, and the matter of Yugoslavia. And then it states that Ankar gave the following opinions and instructions in relation to um, aid, salt production, etc. At that meeting, 
is significant that at a point five, which is Khmer 000 0712, that at point five it states adding forces that there was a proposal to use additional adolescent children from the base areas and handing them over to industry for management. From that, from those meeting minutes, it's, it's quite clear that um, Yang Sari's role enabled him to bring up matters, um, of significant matters, and he was present when discussions were had in relation to uh, putting children to work. If we look at the 28th of February 1976 meeting minutes, six days later at E3-238, we can see that that meeting, uh, Yang Sari was reporting. It states, reporting by Comrade Van. He talks about, he, he discusses the aid from Sweden, uh, financial aid from Sweden, and he discusses, uh, discusses financial aid uh, from Yugoslavia. And then at the end of the meeting, it states that um, Analytical, analytical opinions of Ankar, and then they provide their particular views. At part B, which is Khmer 0007 2459, and French 00446631, um, the opinion of Ankar is stated as um, military and economic viewpoints also see that no force to invade us we also make friends in the world. Normally in the capitalist country, it always has CIA or Soviet agents that sometimes its government is not aware of. But after monitoring, their general policy is all right. Again, discussion of uh, issues as uh, traitors and enemies at that particular meeting. And the last one, Your Honours, that uh, I would like to uh, look at by way of example is the 17th of May 1976, and that um, is at French 00323984. It's uh, sorry, E3 um, slash 223, uh, Khmer 0000829, and English 0018-2708. At this meeting, Yang Sari reported on the activities of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, to Pol Pot. You can see that on the, on the first page. He, he further uh, discusses um, down, down the paragraphs, our side has educated our brothers and sisters to hold meetings, keep confidentiality, and be vigilant. see that. In any event, that's in the fourth paragraph down from uh, Diplomatic Relations of Phnom Penh. So it can be seen that um, Yang Sari, who again is listed as third at that meeting, um, is discussing um, issues uh, relating to uh, vigilance and uh, presumably in relation to um, vigilance uh, in, in sort of building the socialist revolution. And if we look at uh, page 00182711 in the English, and we can see French 00323896, we can see that Yang Sari reports in relation to the embassies in Phnom Penh to continue to educate male and female youths who are in service for them to upgrade the spirit of revolutionary vigilance especially teach them how to report to the ministry and the ministry in turn report to the office. So it's clear that Yang Sari is uh, discussing um, issues relating to um, enemies uh, in these meetings. Your Honour, I've now uh, finished with the uh, Standing Committee meeting minutes um, and I would like to move to another topic and that's the topic of uh, tele <coughs> telegrams. And like <coughs> the Standing Committee meeting minutes, um, 
telegrams and other group of documents which the evidence shows that uh, Yang Sari has been copied in on, on um, what is calculated from the, ca the case file at least a hundred occasions. I'd like to present uh, the document E3893. This is a telegram dated the 26th of January 1976. And I'd like to refer to um, the first two paragraphs of the telegra telegram, where it's to Brother uh, 870, Office 870, Office 870, and Brother V with respect. And it states, we would like to report about the result of the 24 January meeting with the Vietnamese delegation. There were six in the delegation, headed by Liu Yang, Deputy Chief of the Zone Military, Vietnamese side. He told us that his colleague named Hu was sick and could not come. But we noticed that they were supposed to have chief of their zone's military head the delegation to meet us, but changed from the head of delegation to deputy chief of the zone's military, because we changed from cadre to the regiment to chief of zone military. He is old and has very deep thoughts. Then the telegram goes on to discuss um, issues such as border incursion by the Vietnamese uh, and the Cambodian and disagreements there. And, and at paragraph six, at the end, close to the end of the telegram at the bottom, it states, the argument was very difficult. They put a lot of pressure on us, but we managed to maintain our standpoint and we had much confidence because our superiors to them, especially after we showed them our map. We're able to keep the atmosphere of solidarity we assumed that we achieved good success for the first step. You can see at the end of that telegram, it's copied to Pol Pot, Nguyen Chia, Yang Sari, Brother V, Brother Q, Brother Dun, Brother Q being Sun Sen. So it's, it's clear these telegrams demonstrate that um, <coughs> Yang Sari uh, is being apprised of uh, the military situation on a, on a regular basis. Perhaps if we can look at the next telegram, which is E3-995, and it's dated the 19th of March, 1978, later during the day, DK period, as a telegram from Kang Chat alias Say to Committee 870, especially, particularly copied to Yang Sari. And if we look at the end of the document again, it's to Uncle, which is Pol Pot, Nguyen Chia, uh, Yang Sari, Brother Van, Brother Von, Ms. Von Vet, and Office 870, members of the Standing Committee. Now, this telegram is a report on the enemy situation in the zone, including the systematic purge in the north zone. The paragraph that's relevant in terms of how, uh, how exposed and how uh, Yang Sari is and, and other members are to discussions about purging, if we look at uh, paragraph 00019202, this is what the telegram says. The situation of undercover enemies burrowing from within. This dry season, the enemy remnants raised their heads back up and conducted activities of opposition against us in the work sites. These enemy remnants made contact with police, soldiers and civil servants, all of whom disguised themselves as new people. It was only after they conducted activities of opposition against us that we clearly recognised their faces. In conjunction with this, we systematically swept them cleanly away. As of this today, undercover enemies burrowing from within situations has gone quiet. A number of soldiers, police and civil servants fled after we swept 
approximately 20 heads of them cleanly away. We are continuing to take further measures to find and arrest them. As for the undercover enemies in Priya Vahir sector, they no longer exist after we took and are continuing to take further measures to sweep them cleanly away. That's copied to Yang Sari um, and uh, the other standing committee members. Uh, we submit it's a very relevant and probative document, that type of document, in that Yang Sari is participating um, through in the knowledge chain of uh, targeting of enemies. The last telegram, Your Honours, is E3-157, which has just been used uh, by way of an example of the telegrams being sent to um, Yang Sari. E3-157 is a telegram from the 21st of April from Un Meng, alias V, the North East Zone Secretary. It's copied to Yang Sari. It describes border clashes with Vietnam and the execution of internal spies and traitors. In particular, this telegram informed Yang Sari that spies have entered locations twice. We smashed some and some escaped. Internal traitors have been swept clean and their responses have been extracted successfully. In closing on the telegrams, Your Honour, we would submit that these few telegrams of the hundred or so that's on the case file illustrate that Yang Sari had a monitoring role as a, as a senior leader, as a member of the Standing Committee, um, as to um, the activities of uh, CPK membership. Um, and activities that included uh, the killing of enemies um, and internal enemies within the country. Your Honours, I would now <coughs> like to uh, move back again in the chronology to the 30th of March 1976 because we're moving to a, a different type of decision and uh, it's E3-12 which is the um, a Central Committee decision on the 30th of March, 1976, regarding the right to smash inside and outside the ranks. Uh, Your Honours have seen this decision before, and on the, the first page of the decision, it states, the right to smash inside and outside the ranks, objective, that there is a framework in absolute implementation of our revolution to strengthen our socialist democracy, all this to strengthen our state authority. If in the base framework to be decided by the Zone Standing Committee, surrounding the centre office to be decided by the Central Office Committee, independent sectors to be decided by the Standing Committee and the centre military to be decided by the general staff. In this document itself, um, it gives the Standing Committee, uh, amongst other committees, um, the power to, um, to smash, to kill. Uh, Yang Sari, in, in terms of um, how does this relate to the role of Yang Sari, Yang Sari is on the Central Committee and Yang Sari was on the Standing Committee. Your Honours, I would briefly like to turn to E3-210, which is a statement from Q Sampan, dated the 14th of December 2007, and at page Khmer version 00156691 and English 00156949. Q Sampan um, talks about um, 
the disappearance and breaches and, and who approves them? He, he's, he gives this answer. In relation to the excesses which have been denounced during auto-criticism, I'd like to give an example. A number of cadres believed it appropriate to punish those who committed adultery by shaving half the hair from their heads and exposing them to the public. Such mistakes were denounced and corrected. In relation to the arrests at Priya Vahia province, they did occur, but the prisoners were released. They, there were breaches committed at the local level, but the leaders did not approve them. Finally, in relation to the disappearance of the members of the Central Committee and the Standing Committee, everyone seemed to approve, but I did not know the extent or the scope of the arrests. That's significantly uh, probative, we would submit, in light of the Standing Committee, the Central Committee decision um, authorising uh, smashing at, at, at different levels. So, Your Honour, those particular doc documents demonstrate um, Yang Sari's uh, exposure and developing role uh, in the killing policy policies. Also, a point which I um, did not make is that in Q Sampan's interview, uh, E3 slash 210, he was asked um, about um, speeches and he said, I would like to specify that the speech I delivered at Colombo was written by me, for me by Yang Sari. This was not an individual case. During the visits of Nguyen Chia and Von Vet to Beijing, their spe speeches were written by Yang Sari. I brought up the examples of Hu Nim and Hu Yun, but I only learned the information about the rest of these two people after 1979. The point of that, which is at 00156689, is that seemed to be a, a further role of Yang Sari during the period in writing um, the speeches for and other, for other um, senior party members. Your Honours, I would now um, like to turn back again to the 30th of March, um, to, to, sorry, the 5th of October 1976. And I'd like to talk about another group of documents that uh, relate to speeches um, given by Yang Sari um, to the General Assembly of the, of the United Nations. The document I'm referring to is E3-607, and it's dated the um, yeah, 5th of October 1976. And it's interesting that the speeches um, that is uh, that are given by Yang Sari, and, and using this document as an example, they reflect um, the rhetoric of the, sat the statute um, about uh, the importance of being having solidarity with uh, other non-aligned countries, um, and anger vented at uh, capitalist and imperialist countries. And also, even in public speeches, um, Yang Sari is quite uh, bold, shall I say, in, in relating to discussing issues uh, relating to enemies. And I, if I can refer to 00816624 of the Khmer and 00586804 uh, in English, and he states in his speech, since liberation, we have successfully defended and consolidated the gains of the revolution. There is security throughout our territory. However, our own experience and that of other revolutions in the world have taught us that after their defeat. The American imperialists, lackeys and other reactionary forces continue relentlessly to oppose our country, our people and our revolution. 
since it is impossible, if not difficult, for them to attack us openly from the outside, they are striving to rally the rump of the forces of perfidy, perfidy in order to carry out actions of subversion, provocation, division, and undermining inside our country, and also to intervene in our internal affairs. Thanks to our continuous revolutionary vigilance and tight unity, our nation, our people and our army have inflicted upon them some severe defeats. But guided by their aggressiveness and blinded by their vaulting ambition, the American imperialists, their lackeys and other reactionary forces are unwilling to learn the lessons of their defeat and persist in pursuing their criminal activities. There can be no doubt that our people and revolutionary armed forces will inflict upon them, in all independence and sovereignty, further new and ignominious defeat. Your Honours, that statement is a public statement to the United Nations uh, General Assembly, and it's submitted that the, the document is uh, probative in that it reflects exactly what was happening in uh, the standing, standing committee meetings, what was happening um, in communications um, with forces throughout Cambodia via telegrams, in uh, smashing cleanly away or um, killing um, internal enemies. The, the, the public statements and the private statements or private documents, those minutes and the telegrams submitted um, corroborate each other and that's particularly, particularly relevant. Your Honour, if I can move to the next document and it's again, it's in relation to the document number is Um, it's, um, I haven't got the E number with me, but it's D366-7.1.820. And the document stated uh, the 20th of September, 19, 1978. This, this, Your Honour, this document um, doesn't have an E number and we've checked uh, Your Honour's decision in relation to uh, the annexes that the prosecution has put forward. And uh, this document, in fact, uh, wasn't rejected by the decision. I think there was a 20 or 30 or so documents that were rejected. Um, this one wasn't rejected, but it's still, um, through our, our sort of research, still hasn't received uh, an E3 number on the system. So uh, that's why I'm not quoting an E3 number. but. Um, I would only ask if, if uh, perhaps um, a case manager could have a look to see uh, what has happened uh, with, that, with that one, not being given an E3 number. Your Honour, this, is, um, this document is a telegram uh, from, from Yang Sari uh, that was sent to the Subcommission on Discrimination of Protection of Minorities, which is part of the, the Human Rights Commission of the UN. And it was a telegram dated the 16th of April 1978 uh, from the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Democratic Kampuchea addressed to the subcommission. And then the subcommission on the 20th of September, as we can see from the document, forwarded that, forwarded that on um, to members. And in this telegram, in this document from the UN, um, Yang Sari states, or from the Minister of Foreign Affairs, we reject subcommission decision one as impudent as an impudent interference in internal affairs of democratic Kampuchea. By that decision, subcommission supports the activities of traitors to their country and the manoeuvres of American imperialists and their partisans who, after committing 
immeasurable crimes against the people of Kampuchea, massacring more than a million inhabitants of Kampuchea and destroying 80% of Kampuchea, continue to defame democratic Kampuchea, to whitewash their crimes. The United People of Kampuchea is master of its own destiny and after three years of efforts has succeeded in solving fundamental problems. It's self-sufficient in food, is building and defending the country in complete independence and sovereignty, and relying on its own strength without recourse to anything from the imperialists. As in the past, people and government of democratic Kampuchea will make mincemeat of any criminal manoeuvres of the imperialists and their partisans. They will not tolerate any affront to the sovereignty of Kampuchea. Minister of Foreign Affairs, Democratic Kampuchea, 16th of 8th, September 1978. Your Honour, that statement uh, was in response to, and I'll read out the footnote so it's put in context. It's in response to a resolution uh, no, 11 number 31 adopted at its 826th meeting on the 15th of September 1978. The Subcommission on Prevention of Discrimination and Prevention, Prevention Protection of Minorities decided to request its chairman or such member as the chair may wish to appoint to analyse on its behalf the materials on the situation of human rights in democratic Kampuchea, which were before the subcommission in accordance with decision nine of the Commission of Human Rights, together with the comments and observations made by the subcommission and other relevant materials which may be received by the Gen Secretary General for the 35th session of the commission, and to prevent his analysis to the commission, present his analysis to the Commission with the recommendation that the Commission give this matter highest priority at its 35th uh, session. That document is a clear um, uh, a rage directed at uh, the UN for um, other countries raising uh, concerns of human rights abuses in um, September 1978. That behaviour that could be seen in that letter we submit is significant in understanding Yang Sari's role in the regime during that period. The President. Thank you, Mr. Co-Prosecutor. We believe that it is now appropriate a moment uh, ready for the lunch adjournment. The chamber will adjourn until 1.30.